Hi, DLL. Apple's proprietary M chips are very powerful and efficient. Why don't we see Intel and AMD start having RAM as part of the system on the chip? DDR5 should run much faster in this case. Oh, man. Um, with, uh, hold on. Eventually, everything hold on. No, 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 no. Sorry, yeah, hold on, hold so on. It'll be hold one on. big board. I, I, Risk future. This yeah. is a thing Risk I found. future. Risk is good. Yay. Uh... Crap, I can't find it right now, but if you actually, if you look at the, if you watch the video we made recently called Starting At is the Biggest Lie in Tech or something like that, um, there's an Asus laptop that I believe is either available now or will be available very soon that uses a very similar um, RAM on package Asus laptop here. I, I really would like to find it. Dang it. I do not want this future. I want upgradability and interchangeability. It I, I drives me mental. I can't find it. The point is, it's coming. It's coming now. Uh, it's. I mean, it's and, and it's not just laptops. Like you know, we kind of. Oh, it's everything. Yeah, it's everything not, that's configurable. It, it's 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 not even. It's not. Yeah, it's it's even in the data center, where we're seeing we're seeing chips that have HBM right on them. Well, that's not upgradable. Right, whether it's like Nvidia's um, uh, uh, Grace Hopper or Grace Super Chip or whatever it's called, uh, I think Intel has some stuff coming. Um, it, 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 it's 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 coming, and the reality of it is, this is reflective of how the users of these products use them, and not just something that's being pushed on us by the manufacturers. Like I remember my mind being blown. The first time someone told me that in a data center, like in a scale data center, like that someone like a Google might run or an Amazon, when a server is bad, if a stick of RAM goes bad, it is not uncommon for them to rip that server out, put a new one in, and basically just send that to the, scrap the storage and... Uh, put it in a heap for, you know, whoever our partner is who flips these things on eBay, you get rid of it. It's gone, it's out. Whole server, not not a drive, whole server. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they just have an IT room where they, like, fix them? And the answer was, at that scale, it's not a good use of time. It's a better use of time to just throw in a known good brand new working server and not deal with that because they have enough to do and I, the 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 DIYer in me just just about died hearing that but then if that's true if that's the case at least in some at least in some places uh, at real scale, they do this with entire racks of kit, not just servers. So yeah, we have this topic later in the dock, which is Intel's Meteor Lake launches in December. Um, but people have linked articles talking about how uh, it has LPDDR5 on chip, LPDDR5X. Intel demos Meteor Lake CPU with on package LPDDR5X. Is a Tom's Hardware article that yeah, I have gone through, but yeah, uh, there there's one ASUS laptop that we pointed out in that video though that I believe is already using uh, on package memory, or if not on package, it's very very close. Yeah, um, and they in by doing that they were able to run at much much higher frequencies compared to running in a dim or even uh, being soldered to the main board but farther away. Uh, just the signal integrity is so much better. So so right. So back to the service for a second. This coupling of CPU to memory is reflective then of the use case. I mean, most people treat their computer like a microwave. And I know this is, this is the kind of thing that I think is hard for us to wrap our brains around. But for most people, when their computer is dead, the computer is dead. Yeah, yeah. And you Doesn't can take why. it to a repair shop. But as we know, if you've ever taken something to a repair shop, I mean, they want 60 bucks to put in a memory module, right? So imagine how much it costs if you want them to substantially repair the computer it actually doesn't necessarily make financial sense to, rip, to have that computer repaired by someone else. It makes sense for us because we're going to fix it ourselves, right? Are you trying to get something to Jacob Danes? Yeah. The uh, former leader of the Pirate Party of Canada? 
We're in the presence of royalty. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Um, Let's see how this goes. Is this to do with the buzzing? Are we like trying to figure yeah. it out right now or something? Yeah. What is he even doing here? What time is I it? Can't, I actually can't let you log into my phone. I'm sorry. Oh. There's like multiple, not even work related. A lot of needs. <laughs> Look how ready he is. His mom watches this show. That's just, the best part. Just wait for them with the ones. <laughs> Look how ready he is. That took no time. <laughs> Did I hit a nerve at all? I was going to say, if you wanted to, like, text it, you could do that. I just can't let you on to the actual phone itself. That is so funny. Do you need to do funny. something to it? Is there, like, a... Do you need dev mode? We'll, we'll do it when you're not on camera. Okay, sounds good. You, you can calm down. All right. Um, <laughs> anywho... You don't have to do that. <laughs> what was I talking about? <laughs> right, right. So, so this is reflective of the way that people are using this hardware anyway. Right, right, right. Uh, consumer technology, right? So people don't, people don't upgrade stuff. Yeah. They don't repair stuff because it's not cost effective. If you're going to spend $300 repairing a computer you bought for $1,000 five years ago, it's probably not even worth $300. And something else might fail now. It's, and, and whether it would or wouldn't, I could see that being the mentality. Well, if the if the transmission's going, then probably the, you know, the, I'm going to need to change all the belts soon anyway. And then, you know, probably the, the power windows are going to start jamming. Realistically, you know... Uh, at what point does, whether it's a car or a computer or whatever else, at what point does it just turn into a money pit and it's better to start over new? And I think that whether it's, uh, um, whether it's true or not, a lot of people have that perception of computers. So if people are just going to go, hey, my computer's slow, I need a new one anyway, then I think from the manufacturer's standpoint, they're sitting there going, okay, well, this is slower, which makes us less competitive. It costs more, which makes us less competitive. And people aren't even asking for this. Why are we doing this? And so, you know, in some cases, I do think Apple does things that I then get very frustrated by because they weren't necessary and the rest of the industry just goes there. Mm -hmm. But in this case, they're probably just ahead of the curve. We were headed there anyway. I mean, we've been talking about this ever since, what was it? Like fifth gen, I think. I don't fifth necessarily... gen core. It was rumored that Intel would solder desktop CPUs to motherboards. And we were, we were mad about it. I mean, I think justifiably so. But it was, it's been clear the writing's been on the wall for the better part of a decade now. So maybe writing is on the wall in regards to who's going to purchase the thing, which is going to drive engineering decisions at, at companies like this. But I would say I still don't think it's necessarily a good thing um, because someone could repair it eventually, even if the initial consumer yeah. isn't going to repair it. No, you're that right. It doesn't mean that someone couldn't repair it eventually. Tell me this. Okay, I'm totally pivoting a little bit here. Mm. In the world we live in today, with security vulnerabilities being as impactful as they are and as widespread as they are, should we be running 10-year-old processors? <laughs> or should they just go to the scrapper and retrieve the gold? Uh, um, I think for individual consumers, I think a lot of the CPU level vulnerabilities that we've had are not really that big of a deal. Yeah. To be completely honest. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. I just... Uh, but a lot of them have required targeted attacks, if I'm remembering correctly. Sure. Okay. Um, so... Speaking of targeted attacks, I don't know. Uh, did you know that we would need someone's permission to drive by their house with a password cracking server and break into their Wi-Fi because it's illegal? Not surprised. Why'd I bring that up? I would have just done it anyways. No reason. I was. I didn't care. Anywho, <laughs> have I? Like have if I, it was a really powerful password cracking server. Oh, you're gonna try to hit me? I don't know. I just the people and good luck. People exist, and yeah. uh, really powerful password cracking servers exist. Yeah. From Camino. Hypothetically, yeah. uh, if a company called Camino existed, then maybe they would have a really powerful server that could be used for cracking passwords. <laughs> I thought this was, I thought you were referencing something I had said a, no. a bit ago, but okay. Sounds like no. Oh, we've got some good videos coming out in the next little bit here. <laughs> like seriously, we've got, uh, I reviewed one just before the WAN show, um, checking out LaserDisc. I had 
only had one experience with Laserdisc, and it was extremely brief. Not even I didn't even get to watch a whole movie. Uh, so we got a. Have you ever tried Laserdisc? No. You know how big they are, right? Uh, aren't they like records? Basically? Yeah, they're record size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they look like giant CDs, like novelty <laughs> sized CDs. Um, I've and, never actually seen one in person. And they have I movies just on know them. Know about them? Yeah, you can store like an hour of footage per side. <laughs> so if you watch a two-hour movie, you actually have to get up in the middle and flip it. Lord of the Rings is like four discs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and they're, they're, they're double sided, so it's uh, so it's yeah, it's two hours per disc, but it's one hour per side, so. You're gonna be you're gonna be getting you're gonna be getting up to flip your precious over pretty often, I think. Yeah. So Lord of the Rings, uh, wait, Lord of the Rings, the two towers runtime is two hours and fifty nine minutes. With that said, um, Lord of the Rings was never released on Laserdisc, so it's not an issue. But no, I know. I just think it would be fun. Gone with yeah. the Wind sure was, and that's like a three and a half hour movie or something like that. So you'd be getting up like four <laughs> times to or five times to flip the disc or whatever the math works. No, four times I think. Um, Anyway, uh, there were, uh, just before anyone jumps in with the, you know, correction, uh, there were more advanced players that had read heads on both sides, but you still had to get up and change the disc if the movie's longer than two hours, which a lot of movies yeah, that's, are. that's not the extended, I'm trying to find the actual extended edition times, but e either way, regardless, it's long. Yeah, so that video is coming out, I think, this weekend. Uh, we have another one coming this weekend on RF blocking paint. So we found this site that kind of peddles in um, digital smog, like conspiracy yeah. uh, uh, cures and, and remedies. And they have RF blocking paint that you can use to paint your room to keep the, to keep the 5G out. Brilliant. Um, it's, I don't want to spoil too much, but it works shockingly well. Really? Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, so it's the first, would you say this is the first legit use of the RF, uh, the EMC chamber? Like in video? No. No. Oh, he's eating. Is there, yeah, he's having yeah. some dinner. Doesn't the wall it, block the 5G though? No, no, the 5G millimeter wave, yeah, could be blocked by a piece of by tree. this, this yeah. garment. Mm -hmm. um, but a non-millimeter wave, no, no, it, it can like pass through stuff. Is there... Yeah, a bunch of people in chat are asking this too. Um, it's not lead paint, is it? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I took it and I brought it with me like this. Wow. No, it's not lead wow. paint, you fucks. Wow. <laughs> wow. I believed it. Oh man. Come on. The extended you guys. times are three hours and forty-eight minutes for fellowship. Three hours and fifty-five minutes for two hours, and four hours and twenty-three minutes for Return of the King. Okay, so hold, 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 hold. okay, so for, for Return of the King, hold on. <laughs> One side, two side, two three, hours, three discs. three side, four side. So you have to get up. So you have to put it in. You have to get up to change it. That's one getting up. You have to get up to put in the second disc. You have to get up to flip the second disc, and you have to get up to put in the third disc. If it existed, you would have to get up four <laughs> times during the movie, including, how, how long was it? Four hours and... Uh, four hours and 23 minutes. Including one time, 23 minutes before the end of the movie, to basically just watch the epilogue, essentially. <laughs> Yikes. That's pretty epic. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, we're supposed to do some more topics, eh? Wolfick says, here's the question, how many movies are even less than an hour? Oh, no. Yeah, so you're no. going to be flipping no, no matter, matter what. what you're watching. Unless you have one of the fancy dual head oh. ones. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, so it it doesn't even flip it itself, it just starts playing? So there's like maybe a blip? And there were like, for commercial, there were commercial solutions, like really advanced stuff where you it had like changers. Remember CD changers? Well, there were laser disc changers. But it was not for movies, it was for like karaoke. Yeah, one of the big benefits of Laserdisc was it was, to my knowledge, the earliest home hmm. format to support multiple audio tracks. My was, dad used to run it. Uh, it. Like one of its major adoptions was karaoke because you can have all of these tracks on one big disc and then you want to go to the next one? Well, it's right here on the disc. Done. Instant. Every single time. You know? It's awesome. Plus video. I'm pretty sure that came through the mic, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, for karaoke, uh, they would have entire libraries and it was so cool because you could have the vocal track and the music track separated, which for karaoke, I think has pretty obvious benefits. 